Hey everybody, thanks for being here. Today we're going to learn how to save some salmon and steelhead, plus make some serious cash with the Northern Pike Minnow Program. Now if you want to learn how to catch more fish, plus learn how to make some great money, stay tuned. I'm Justin Wolf, and this is Angler West Television. If you fish the Columbia River, then you've probably caught pike minnow before, just incidentally. But did you know that through the Northern Pike Minnow Reward Program, which is a project of the Pacific States Marine Fisheries Commission, you can be paid between $5 and $8 for each one of those fish, depending on how many you catch, during the season, which is May through September. The pike minnow is a salmon and steelhead smolt's number one predator. So by participating in this program, you're not only helping the salmon and steelhead, but you're also putting money in your pocket. Now, the number one pike minnow fisherman this year caught nearly $100,000 worth of fish. Now that I've got your attention, let's go to the Columbia River, where we're going to learn about this program, plus learn some effective bait fishing techniques for northern pike minnow. We've launched in Vancouver, Washington, in the Columbia River to target northern pike minnow with Paul Dunlap and Eric Winther of the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. We're launching here at Port Co in uh, Vancouver, Washington. Uh, heading out to do a little pike minnow fishing just here in the Portland, Vancouver area. Short run, uh, heading downstream, tending towards the, the I-5 bridge, crossing over to the Oregon shore. Well, basically with, with these uh, pike minnow, they're in little pockets and different things congregate them, whether it's food or spawning or something like that. And, so one strategy, one strategy is you want to fish a lot of different locations, and if they're there, they're there. And over time, we've discovered this particular spot is pretty, pretty dependable, but there's a series of these spots all up and down the river, and so depending on how it goes, we may hit a bunch of those. Um, you're fishing wing dams, uh, structure of some sort, close to shore, probably 15, 16 feet down to eight, 10 feet, something like that. And <clears throat> the spot we're going to, seems like it's one of those where it's congregating some of the bait. And this time of year, it'd probably be juvenile shad. So just where we came through was about 38 to 44 feet. And it's starting to shallow up as we get towards this the marker here. And we're gonna go down and swing over it and then come back up and anchor somewhere right in here. Standard uh, bait setup, um, got an egg loop on here. We're gonna fish chicken liver with this. Um, fluorocarbon leader, about six pound, uh, braided main line. We've got about a half ounce lead on a slider. And we're gonna see if that's enough lead. We're gonna add more if it doesn't hold bottom well enough and, and add less if it's too anchored. So what we have here is just ordinary chicken liver. Chicken liver, you buy it Safeway, Fred Meyer, or something like that. It's uh, probably the most popular pike minnow bait going back 25 years. Not necessarily the best, but it's the most popular. Now the deal with, with chicken liver is it's a real soft bait, so you have to keep it cold. You want to keep it on ice while you're fishing and tie it on with an egg loop. Otherwise, your cast and bait goes one way and the, your hook goes the other way, so. <clears throat> now I'm just cutting little bait-sized pieces out of that. Just getting the egg loop there. A piece of liver. It's got kind of a skin on it, so you want to run it through that skin a time or two. and tie it on with the, uh, the egg loop. And we're just gonna make a little cast and drop it down, walk it back. And 
See what happens. See how long the leader is, about four foot. So there we make a little cast out. You're dropping it, dropping the bait down to the bottom, and then you're lifting up and letting line out and walking it out a little further. You're trying to, trying to walk it back to where that, that bottom starts to come up, right about in there. It just depends on the, on the current, so that's what we're playing with right now is the, the uh, size of weight so that we can walk it back the appropriate length and get back there where the fish are. <laughs> cheese just got a bite. This is just a sharp white cheddar cheese. Just gonna push the hook into it and mold it around the hook. Okay, since we just got to the spot here, we're, we're gonna try a number of different baits. We're gonna try to maximize the uh, types that we have out there, see what the fish are, are after today. You can use, use lots of different baits and lures for pike minnow. The key is, is really finding them. Uh, once you find them, they'll take lots of baits and lures. We just had a bite on uh, cheese here, just got the chicken liver out. And this next rod, we're, gonna, we're just gonna go with the old garden variety night crawler. to try that. For rules, regulations, fishing advice, and instructions, and locations of check-in stations, visit pikeminnow.org. Welcome back to the Columbia River. I'm Justin Wolf. We're fishing a side channel of the Columbia just downstream from the I-5 bridge, just one of the countless great pike minnow fishing spots up and down the Columbia. Size six hook, same as with the uh, chicken liver. We're just running the... Uh... I like to keep the hook point exposed, but I like to run the, the worm through there two, three times just to make sure it hangs on. Um, you could use the, the egg loop on this, but I, I don't think I'll use it for now. Uh, cast it out, see what happens. Here we go. Never mind. This is about the average size for the lower Columbia River area. Okay, so this is a northern pike minnow. Uh, this, this is a native fish here in Washington, Oregon. It's always been here. Uh, the trouble with it is it, it's the main fish predator of baby salmon and steelhead. So the pike minnow program, we're trying to, we're trying to catch pike minnow like this that are nine inches or bigger and we'll pay anglers for them a sliding scale. The more you catch, um, the more you make. So it start this fish by itself would be worth five dollars. So a fish that's nine inches or larger is worth five dollars. If you get more than 25 fish, goes up to six dollars each. And if you get over go to get over 200 fish, uh, goes up to eight dollars a piece on these. We also tag some of these fish because, like I say, it's a native fish. We're not trying to eradicate it. But based on the tag recoveries, we can estimate what portion of the population we, we are harvesting. We're trying to get 10 to 20 percent any given year. And so based on those tag recoveries, uh, that's how we estimate that. By the way, the tags are worth $500 each, so that makes for a pretty good day, too. So when you get these fish, uh, you do have to take good care of them. They need to be alive or fresh. So you want to put them on ice right away. Um, they, they can be dead, that's fine, uh, but uh, make sure they're in good condition. Otherwise, they may not be eligible for the reward. We take biological data on the fish when we take them. And so to get accurate data, we need to have those fish in good condition. We've got our frozen water jug here. Got to make sure we keep these pike minnow fresh condition on ice, something like that. Put that in there, that should be pretty darn good. Right now I'm just trying to kind of back it back a little bit farther out into the, in the hole. Um, when the pike minnow bite, they'll kind of peck at it and then they'll, they'll take it pretty aggressively. Um, using bait, they usually swallow it. You feel the bite, you uh, basically want to feel a, a pull 
the pecking by itself isn't quite enough. You need to have a little bit of pulling away, and as you pull back, you should be able to feel them and then set that hook. You don't need to set it super hard, but just firm. Using a uh, light uh, seven foot lima glass graphite, uh, definitely like the graphite, a little better sense of, uh, of feel uh, on the bite. Uh, the bite can be pretty darn subtle. Um, you want to have a, a little bit of a soft tip, but a, a decent backbone because the fish can get up to 20, 24 inches and pretty good uh, fighters initially, especially in a big river like the Columbia. Yep, just netting this one. So this one was on the uh, chicken liver. And Paul's hookup is on the uh, shark cheese. See that I just barely got that one. Once again, you can see that's well over, well over nine inches. So that's a, uh, five to eight dollar fish. For rules, regulations, fishing advice and instructions and locations of check-in stations, visit pikeminnow.org. Once again, you can see that's well over, well over nine inches. So that's a, a five to eight dollar fish. We're on the Columbia River getting a pike minnow fishing lesson from fish biologist Eric Winther and Paul Dunlap from the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife and the Northern Pike Minnow Sport Reward Program. I'm using a size 14 treble hook for the cheese. And the treble hook helps the cheese, you can mold the cheese around the treble hook which helps the cheese stay on. And the key with cheese is keeping it cold to help it stay on the hook. Just like salmon or steelhead, you want to be uh, fishing the tides here in the Portland, Vancouver area. Uh, for us, we're, we're looking for an outgoing tide for this area. Got the, the tides building towards uh, this after, early afternoon, and so it should just get better and better as, as we go on. So that's one thing about pike minnow fishing. It's a lot like the uh, professional bass guys. They will have one rod uh, fishing, and then what right as they reel in a fish, get that fish in the boat, they'll, they'll take the other rod and cast it out right away before they even deal with the fish, just so they can maximize their, their time with, with baits in the water. So the uh, top angler this year looks like he's gonna have uh, somewhere over $90,000 uh, catching pike minnow in the five months of the program from May through September. He, last year he had, I, think, I believe it was 80, 74,000, what was it? Close to 80,000, I believe. But he's been the top guy, you know, pretty much just about every year for the last several years. I tell a lot of people he's kind of like the Michael Jordan of pike minnow fishing. He's just that, that good. Uh, he's, got, he's got over 10,000 fish uh, in the 2015 season. That's a lot of fishing. Double. So you're doing on my side, Paul. <laughs> Where's that net? Don't do that too often. So the average pike minnow angler gets between seven and eight fish per angler per day. 
Um, but just like salmon fishing, you've got 10% of the guys catching 80% of the fish. So you got some really good anglers and you got a lot of guys that are just getting a couple fish here and there. Was it, is it still t tied, the uh, cheese and the chicken I think the liver? cheese is one up. Cheese is one up? Okay. Money for this uh, program is comes from Bonneville Power. They're required to, to fund salmon enhancement projects like this on the Columbia River because of the federal hydropower system. And so this is our 25th year for the pike minnow program uh, that, that BPA has been funding this program. Well, basically, as far as uh, success-wise, we, uh, we're trying to get 10 to 20 percent of the, po the pike minnow population every year. And most years we've been, we've been successful at doing that. So based on that, yes, we are successful. We average, our anglers average about 175,000 pike minnow removed every year. And this year, 2015, is uh, above average. We, we got just over 200,000 pike minnow this year, so it's definitely a good year. We, do, we tend to do a little better. Uh, our anglers do on low water years. So it's, it's sounding like 2016 may also be a low water year, so that's, that's usually a lot better for our anglers. There's not really a, a set number of fish we're trying to get. We're trying to get that 10 to 20% of the population. And like I say, that's gonna, any given year, that's somewhere between 150,000 and 250,000 fish. Uh, that's what that works out to be. For rules, regulations, fishing advice and instructions, and locations of check-in stations, visit pikeminnow.org. Hey everybody, I hope you're enjoying today's episode. Now before we go back to the Columbia River to learn more about pike minnow fishing, I want to share a few things with you. Now we're bait fishing today. We're using cheese, we're using worms, and chicken livers. And those are popular baits, but actually the most popular bait, and probably considered the most effective, is raw uncured salmon eggs, or roe. Now that doesn't mean you can't doctor them up. You, a little bit of uh, procure anise in either bloody tuna, or anise plus, or even pure anise. I know it's very popular with the pike minnow fishermen. Now, we're using size six octopus style hooks. Now, I recommend the Brad's hooks because they're good quality and they're very inexpensive. And also, fluorocarbon leader is important and the P-Line CFX six pound fluorocarbon is perfect for this. Now, for the roe and the chicken liver especially, it's important that you use an egg loop. Now, if you've never learned to tie an egg loop, it's about time you did. So here, I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration. Now, for help in showing you, I'm just gonna use some heavy P-Line braid here just so you can see it better. So about a four foot leader. And you're gonna run your line through the front of your hook. Hold it with your left hand, if you're right-handed. And start your wind. So three, four, five, six, seven. The number of turns you make is gonna depend on the size of the hook you're using and the weight of the line you're using. And as the more you do it, you'll experiment with it and you'll figure out exactly how many wraps you want to do each time. So then you're going to pull your line to the bottom and put it back through the front of the eye. Pull it through a little bit. I'm still holding it with my fingers here. Hold everything together. Grab the line that I was already wrapping with again and start my wraps again. Right over the line. Five, six, seven, that'll probably do it. Now I've got everything held in the fingers and I'm gonna pull on the tag in here. All the way through, there you go. You push that back through and there's your egg loop. You just put your eggs or your bait in there and cinch it down tight and you're ready to go. Now, let's go back to the Columbia River to learn how to catch more pike minnow. Eric Winter and Paul Dunlap are giving us a good lesson on how to fill the boat with northern pike minnow, which boils down to first finding good concentrations of fish, then giving them the bait they want that day. The night crawler hasn't really done it for us so far here, but uh, before I totally give up on it, I think we'll try a little bit of the anise bloody tuna, try to add a little scent to that, see if maybe that freshens it up, maybe if that gets us a little bit of action. I know it's not going to stick that great, but we'll just try to work it in there a little bit. The pike minnow have a pretty keen sense of smell, so I don't think it's going to take a whole lot. 
Maybe. Tapping a little bit. It's not always the way it is. You reach for it, it stops. Just like to move them just a little bit if it doesn't come back. See if you can sometimes kind of stimulate them into biting back. Both rods getting bit. Just little pecks though. When they bite like that, it's either a small fish or, but sometimes it's not. So I'm just lifting up slightly, trying to get them to commit. Not committing. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Now another sucker, darn it. Big sucker. <laughs> So that's the downside of fishing bait. Um, a lot of times you'll get fish other than pike minnow. In this case, we've got a uh, sucker, and it looks like he's uh, swallowed the bait, so we're probably gonna have to cut the leader on that one. Uh, not after pike minnow, or we are after pike minnow, not after suckers. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode. You know, without the support of the sponsors, the show would not be possible. So please thank them when you can. Now get out there and do some great fishing. For rules, regulations, fishing advice and instructions, and locations of check-in stations, visit pikeminnow.org.